Hi, everyone. My name's Christy. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about belly breathing. And this card is from the Small Changes, Big Shifts deck of cards. So 52 weeks, there's 52 cards. This week is about breathing. I will totally admit, I don't really like the term belly breathing because we don't breathe through our belly. We actually breathe using the diaphragm and the lungs. However, the reason why it might be called belly breathing is because when we are using our diaphragm to breathe, our belly responds to that. So let's, I'm going to give a real quick um, ex explanation about our ideal breath. So I want you to keep in mind we have our lungs and we have the diaphragm. The diaphragm sits right underneath the lungs. Now the diaphragm is the main breathing muscle. It's kind of like the heart pumps all the time and without us even realizing it, you know, and without us having to make it do it. It's, it does it involuntarily. So the diaphragm is the same way and it works as hard as the heart does, meaning as often. We take, I don't know, 25,000 um, breaths a day, 20, maybe 20,000. So what should happen with each of those breaths is here's the diaphragm. It's a dome-shaped muscle. It actually is a muscle. And as we fill our lungs with air, the diaphragm releases down. Because the diaphragm presses on the internal organs, the, it displaces the inter internal organs and our belly rises slightly. So then as we exhale, the diaphragm lifts up and the internal organs can release back in. So one of my favorite exercises for people, if we're trying to, okay, let's just focus for a moment on our breathing. I'll ask everyone to lie on the floor. You'll put one hand right at your belly button and one hand at your chest. You'll close your eyes and then you'll just take a few breaths. What you might notice is that your belly is rising and falling as you breathe. If you've ever seen a baby breathe, you'll see the rise and fall of the belly. Um, so the reason the belly is rising and falling is because the diaphragm is displacing the internal organs and the belly responds to that. So think of the belly responding like a flag would flutter in the wind, meaning the flag is doing nothing in and of itself to move. It is moving because the wind is blowing it, sort of like the rise and fall of the belly. It's simply happening because the diaphragm is adding pressure um, to, those, to the belly. So keep that in mind. I think that's a great, great analogy. What I don't want you to do if you're practicing this at home or in your office or wherever you are, um, don't intentionally push the belly out. So it's not an intentional movement. I would like you to think about expanding the lungs. So the lungs should expand in three dimensions. We're going to breathe, our breath goes up and down. It also, the lungs expand laterally. They also expand front to back. So. You might, even if you place your hands on your rib cage and you inhale, you may feel the rib cage expand into your hands. Now they not just expand laterally, you'll also feel them expand from front to back. You may also feel the breath right behind the sternum and the collarbones. So up and down, forward and back, and side to side. The breath moves in all of these dimensions. Now, that was a lot of mechanical, how does the breath move? But I'd love it if you just take a moment, like literally two minutes, lie on your back and try that exercise. The other thing that is hugely important when we're talking about our breath is the way we breathe helps us control our autonomic nervous system, which is the sympathetic nervous system, that's the fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system. If we are breathing, if we're a chest breather, and we're breathing high in our chest, and many many people are, 
um, that they don't have that sensation of the belly rising and falling. If we're constantly breathing high in our chest, and for most people, they won't, you won't even know it until you totally relax on the floor for two minutes and focus on it. Um, that is going to put our autonomic nervous system into that sympathetic state. It's going to be a low-grade stressor all day long. So if we can use our diaphragm and breathe more deeply into the lungs, it starts to switch from sympathetic into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest. That's where cortisol levels decrease. We have more mental capacity to think clearly. Um, we feel calmer. It, that's where we should live, is that parasympathetic state. And once in a while, we move into the sympathetic state when we're doing our workout or when we're playing football or when we're you know, running from that angry dog. So those are the sympathetic times we should have a time where I've got to run as fast as I can or I'm just doing it for fun, right? I, and there's always going to be the times that um, I'm under a deadline and this is stressful. And my heart's pounding and I'm breathing a little more shallow. So those times happen. But what's most important is how do we transition and can we make that transition pretty quickly? So my hope is that what you take away from this is simply noticing how you breathe. And if you can take two minutes, lie on the floor, and one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, that's a good way to start about getting in touch with how you breathe. Thanks for watching this video. If there's questions, please let me know, and stay tuned for more.